If you imagine Paul as a gentle, soft-spoken missionary type, well, the next two books may come as a bit of a shock. First and Second Corinthians provide a snapshot of Paul's relationship with the church he started in Corinth, a wealthy city in southern Greece. Paul spent a year in Corinth before eventually moving on. He kept in touch, though, visiting from time to time and exchanging letters. One of these letters, 1 Corinthians, reveals the full scope of chaos that set in following Paul's departure. Every community has its share of dysfunction, but the Corinthians elevated drama to an art form. The church in Corinth was splitting into factions. They were dragging each other to court, neglecting the poor while the wealthy feasted. And that was just the tip of the iceberg. Paul's letter didn't exactly smooth things over, so he made an unannounced visit, which prompted even more conflict and a direct challenge to his authority as a leader of the church. Paul left abruptly and penned a sharp letter of rebuke, which we don't have anymore. Then, awkward silence. Until news finally reached Paul that the Corinthians had experienced a change of heart. They still had their share of problems, though, including a roaming band of self-proclaimed super-apostles, which had rolled into town since Paul's last visit. So he wrote another letter, 2 Corinthians, affirming his love for the community in Corinth and addressing some of the new challenges they were facing. First and 2 Corinthians follow pretty much the same pattern as the other New Testament letters. Paul covers a lot of ground in his first letter, answering the Corinthians' questions and confronting some of the more alarming reports that had reached him. In 2 Corinthians, Paul relays what he'd been up to after his unexpected visit to Corinth. He expresses relief at their change of heart and warns of some difficult confrontations still to come, especially concerning these so-called super-apostles. Paul can be a bit uh, hard to take in 1 and 2 Corinthians. He's intense, angry, even sarcastic at times. Behind all that intensity was a man who still believed in the church at Corinth. Despite their dysfunction, they were still brothers and sisters. They were still God's church, still recipients of God's love. Which, if you think about it, is kind of good news for us when we're confronted with the dysfunction in our own lives.